<laughs> We're in Toronto, going to Beijing, and then ultimately UB, Ulaanbaatar, and Mongolia. So, on our way. I must say, I've done this trip a couple times now, and it's not exactly pleasant. <laughs> We're about four hours into a 13-hour trip, and uh, it's something. It's going to be fun when we get there, but uh, it's something. <laughs> hey, folks. Well, it started. Uh, I'm finally, uh, we are finally in Mongolia. We just woke up. It's early. It's, uh, I think it's 6 a.m. right now, and we had a heck of a time with our journey here. Um, we flew from Minneapolis I think 6 a.m. on like the 3rd, got to Toronto, had about a six hour layover, flew like 13 hours to Beijing, went four today, um, and then had a 16 hour layover in Beijing, and then went to catch our two and a half hour flight to Ulaanbaatar, and it was delayed like 12 hours. So, we, <laughs> we were spent. We slept a lot in the airport. Well, not a lot, but we found some, bent, some chairs that didn't have armrests, and so we were able to sprawl out, get some sleep. Um, our clocks were a little bit messed up, but I'm feeling pretty good today. I got a little bit of sleep yesterday when our plane was delayed. I just crapped out on, a, on a, some chairs and just slept for about four or five hours. So... Anyway, they have been having some pretty intense summer storms here in Ulaanbaatar, or in Mongolia, I should say, and uh, so it's been raining a ton here, and I was informed that to get to my site, uh, they were going to hire a Russian truck for us, to one of these, the big, I think that big yellow Unamog thing that they showed when folks were tapping out, uh, but the river's even too deep for that. So... We are going to be able to make it to base camp and potentially uh, just chill there for a few days, which is fine. It's beautiful at base camp, but it'll still be a lot of fun. I'm going to uh, be able to fish there. We're going to be able to camp. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it's starting off interesting. But, you know, that's just the way things are. It's, you have to make sure, and no matter what you do, uh, whether it's uh, at home, uh, camping or going on an adventure, or you know, clear across the world or, you know, halfway across the world in, in Mongolia, you have to modify your plans to, to suit the situation. I would not want to, you know, not that I could or anything, but I would not want to insist, hey, we have to cross this river, you know, or if people weren't with me, take my wife and say, hey, we have to cross this river, we have to get in this boat and do this. No, you, you change your plans according to the circumstances that Mother Nature throws your way. We're still going to have a great trip. It's going to be fantastic. This is only one little part of the trip, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. But you don't want to put yourself and other people in danger just simply because you had it set in your mind that this is the way the trip has to go. It doesn't have to be like that. So, long way of saying, I don't think I'm going to make it to my site, which is fine, you know, whatever. So, I'll give you a quick little tour. a tour of the bedroom. Take two actually. It was a mess and my wife uh, scolded me and made me videotape it when it was cleaned up. But that's the bedroom. Living room with my wife. <laughs> We're all packed up ready to go. There's the bathroom. All the amenities. Plus more. Plus more for sure. Alright. Alright, headed to the Khan Kente Special Protected Zone. I think that's how they say it. Khan Kente Special Protected Zone. Very lucky to be able to go back.
All right, let's hit the road. There's going to be a lot of short clips probably of us driving. We've got an 8 to 10 hour car ride ahead of us. So I'll try to stick the camera out the window and capture some of that. Um, it's going to be a long, hard road trip, but I'm looking forward to it because uh, when you finally get <clears throat> a ways out into the city and start getting into that hardcore dirt road, it's, it's pretty cool. We've got two, two Land Rovers that are going to carry our stuff plus the camping stuff. Uh, they really went out of their ways. Uh, panora um, panoramic Journeys, uh, I'll, at the end of some of these videos, whenever I get back to editing them, I'll try and link their website. But they've really gone out of their way. <clears throat> um, and they just they don't just do this for me, they do it for everybody. To, to just make sure that the trip is really safe and worthwhile. We're going to have a sat phone, um, like I said, two Land Rovers, I'm sure they'll have snorkels on them. A, a kitchen tent and camping supplies for us so it's uh, panoramic journeys man they really they're top-notch uh, if you want to come to Mongolia and you want um, this type of adventure I would highly recommend them special <laughs> with so many people did you do you guys live close or did you have to drive far to come to the hotel uh. um. Who knows the area well? Okay. We have some other stuff in that car too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what else, you guys. This is surprising. On your right side is the main square. Oh, fun. The parliament building on the north side of it. So, there. Yeah. The in front of the parliament building, there's a big statue. Right now we are on the main road. Uh, it, it stretches all the way from west to east, or east to west. It cuts through the whole city, midway. And uh, he had followers, and after his death, his followers taught, taught his teaching. And it spread, spread throughout Asia. Have you ever taken anybody on like a camel caravan? <laughs> uh, not quite. Uh, a little bit? Yeah, two different locations. Okay. So uh, a few, few of the Silk Roads went through Mongolia. Uh, but I think a lot of them did, didn't go through Mongolia. It's fun that the roofs are different colors. Do you see anything huge that between the two? Oh, 
yeah, it's a little bit of a cultural difference. I say a lot, a lot of things. It is very good infrastructure, yeah, very, very good organization. Tar road ended, it turned off. Now it's going to be all dirt road. Yeah, that's where we're going to have lunch, probably. Okay. That's like the halfway point, kind of. Oh, sure. Zuhara is in the distance there. That's where we're going to have lunch. What would you think so far? I think it's awesome. I think it's it's fun. It's a new experience. It's an adventure. Wow, the people are wonderful. The food is fantastic. We just went to... I don't even remember the name of the town. I have it written down. It's... Uh, what is it? Zuhara. And uh, that's the halfway point. We stopped here on the way up when we were doing the show. Stopped here, had like a box lunch. The lunch we just had right now was way better. We actually got to stop in a restaurant and uh, we had a couple beers. We're just um, uh, talking with the guys. We've got two drivers, an expert with the um, Kente uh, special protected, protected zone uh, guide. And then we have another guide who uh, taught us a lot about, he's just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, the folks are just phenomenal, just super nice guys. Three of them speak uh, uh, English. One of them, one guide speaks really good English. Uh, one of the drivers doesn't speak uh, any at all, but I mean, they're just uh, super nice guys and we're just having a great time trying to p do pictures, trying to do some video, but it's hard in the moving car and everything. But um, the first bit of the journey wasn't very difficult, but we were just warned that with all the rain and everything that this next part is going to be pretty brutal. This is just a good stopping spot. Okay. It's a beautiful view. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Mongolian selfie. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, it's 
meant to. Right. It's a hole that causes gold in the head. Right. Something is going to go not invisible. Still on the road, about eight hours later. We're getting there. Beautiful. What an enjoyable ride. base camp here and uh, I don't know it's pretty incredible different emotions going through my head right now just I don't know it's just different good emotions but just a trip being back here I remember the first time we came back here to do season five and just looking and seeing all the curves that were all set up and just the excitement after the long journey and that's also tap camp so I had those I have those memories coming back too and the memories uh, walking down this road chilling after the time after I tapped and it's uh, I don't want to say it's overwhelming, but it's it's pretty intense. It's a lot different than Vancouver Island because this time was just so much more emotional um, in such a shorter amount of period of time. So anyway, whatever. past base camp and we are now going to Miga's house who is the park ranger who's been a the ranger here for approximately 30 years and we are get to we get to go camp oh look at that that's his home we get to go camp next to Miga amazing Yeah. 
Well, we're here close to base camp. Um, we talked to Miga for a while. Fantastic. It was surreal. It was like I stepped back in time about two to three hundred years. It was amazing. Um, super awesome experience. And now we're going to go camping. There's Rachel coming back from the fire. Yay for Rachel. She made base camp. <laughs> so okay if I record you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. All right, super awesome Mongolian dinner. We're close to my site, we're close to base camp. I don't even know what they're making. There's garlic, there's onions, there's, I, it, people have been just like chopping stuff left and right. What's going on there, man? What's going on? I'm, uh, I'm just making veggie and meat soup. Just making veggie and meat soup. Yeah, okay. Put some black There's pepper in there, some salt. Now I'm gonna see if uh, I'm gonna taste if there is enough salt in the soup. Pretty good. Okay. This is blurry, but. Uh, let me uh, tell you, this is there's a lot of preparation been going on here. We had a pretty good light night last night, uh, hanging with Miga, the park ranger, and all the Mongolian folks that we have here. Trying to get the light good, and uh, we've got a uh, beautiful morning starting up. The fog was pretty thick this morning, but it was beautiful. Went fishing. I'll show you the fishing setup that they let me use and I'll show you if I caught anything. This is a fishing pole, just you know, <laughs> standard fishing pole. And then this is the lure, nice little spinner here. And I went ahead and cleaned him. But I caught a nice little grayling here. Uh, yep, nice little grayling. And for reference, Got some puff balls that we found, and I'm gonna cook this bad boy up. Get that scale off of there, a little grass off of there. So now it's time to cook up some fish and eat it. <laughs> Just like when I was here last time. So orientation camp or tap, tap camp, both the same thing. It was right through those trees. We just visited it. I took some pictures. I forgot to do any video. Um, sometimes it's hard to remember to do video when you're trying to experience and have a good time as well. But I took a lot of walks down here when uh, both before and after I tapped. I remember that mountain well. It's just a be beautiful spot on the river. Come here, look at this, Rach. Look at that, guys. Look at how beautiful that is. It's just so peaceful here. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I think we came a long way to see this. It's yep. really nice. <laughs> Caught a fish this morning, a grayling. Of course, I didn't film that either, but I'm doing the best I can, guys.
So this is the spot that we drove across the river in the Unimog after I tapped. And I'll get a little better view of it. But that Unimog could go basically anywhere it wanted to. But it was still a trip bouncing. There's like zero suspension in the thing. So it was a trip climbing up this thing in that Unimog. You just held on and did the best you could. I can't remember where we drove to, but we drove somewhere across the river here. The river is a lot higher than it was. And then we drove up that. That's an old bridge. I can't remember if that's an old bridge for a railroad or if when they were harvesting timbers. They harvested timbers around here for the Trans-Siberian Railroad. So this is the junction for two rivers. That one over there is the one that we were all on. I thought we were on different rivers, but we were all on that river over there. And what's that one called, Rage? The Hungi? I think so. Yeah. Together they make the Euro, and then this one is the Bungsi or something? Oh, Char this one's the Charlin? The other one's the Charlin. This is the Hungi. So that's the Charlin, the Hungi, and together they make the Euro, I think. It's hard to pronounce stuff. For me, anyway. Alright guys, I said I wasn't going to be able to go to my site, but it turns out we're going to try and get there. We will be across the river from my site, so I won't actually get to set foot on it, but at least I'll be able to see it. And what we have to do is we have to cross a river in a raft. That raft behind me there. And we have to paddle like mad to get across this flooded river. And then we've got about, let's see, how far did they say it was? It, either way, they said it in kilometers, but I think it's about eight miles there and back. So or eight miles there and then eight miles back. So that's what we're going to do. I won't be able to videotape it for obvious reasons. We're going to be paddling like crazy and I don't have a cameraman. You know, <clears throat> I can't set my camera up and then try to go back and get it. So, um, sorry I can't videotape that. But, yeah. Turned out to be a beautiful day. We heard wolves this morning. We, we heard one solitary howl last night. And uh, yeah, today we got a full day here and then we're going back to UB tomorrow. So, looking forward to it. Well, we paddled like hell. We got across. So, we started where that red truck is and paddled to here. On the road to my site. Just started the walk, did the river crossing. Pretty remote. So, somewhere over there is Nicole's site. They just told us. I wasn't quick enough to get the video camera out, but we passed a huge rock slide, and uh, there's really no way to get here with a, with, a, with a Land Rover. I think you could probably do it with one of them big Russian trucks, but it was pretty intense. So, you know, we had a lot of rain, or they had a lot of rain this year. So, you know, they could have came, got her with a helicopter, but that's just some of the dangers we faced was natural, natural obstacles. Like if that would have rained and fell, and she would have called for help right away, that would have thrown a wrench into things for sure. So, you know, the, the TV did a lot of hype as far as, you know,
know it was the most dangerous season, blah, blah, blah. I want to say it was. Is it a pit viper? Huh? Oh, yeah. We just Who wants uh, to carry me? <laughs> there was just a pit viper right in the middle of the road here. And Rachel uh, does not like snakes. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> Well, that was exciting. <laughs> we just, <laughs> we let him go about his way. <laughs> Shit, there's another one. Ooh, there's another one right there. He just walked right over it. He just walked right over it. Look at him. That's a Siberian pit viper? Yeah. Yeah, they seem to be out today. Holy smokes. That's the second one that almost got Hasa. Oh, well, it's uh, turning into an interesting hike. <laughs>